Welcome to this video on oil control systems, which is part of our advanced refrigeration course. So let's talk first about what, why we have oil in a refrigeration system. First, oil is used to lubricate the compressor's moving parts. However, a certain amount of this oil does leave the compressor with the refrigerant vapor. So just remember, as refrigerant circles throughout a refrigeration system, oil is part of the refrigeration circulation. It's important that this oil does return to the compressor and prevent it for, from moving around the system where it might cause operational problems and component damage. Various devices used through the refrigeration system are designed to collect and return the oil to the compressor. HVAC R systems may use the following oil control devices, might use an oil separator, might use an oil reservoir, might use oil level regulators, might use oil safety controls. Now the smaller system, don't worry about it because the system is designed with the velocity of the refrigerant in mind to return the oil to the compressor. Refrigeration systems work best when oil is kept at a proper level in the compressor. Oil is a thermal insulator. Any oil in the condenser and evaporator can reduce the system's heat transfer efficiency. This would result in excess energy consumption as the compressor must run longer in order to achieve the desired evaporator temperature. It is very important to keep the oil from circulating in low temperatures installations as the oil will thicken because of its viscosity and be difficult to move through the evaporator. An oil separator is a system component that removes oil from high pressure refrigerant vapor as both refrigerant and oil leave the compressor. An oil separator is placed between the compressor and condenser, in other words, on the discharge line. So this is an example, two pictures here. First, the one labeled A is an oil separator, and B is how it's placed into the system. Okay, we have our discharge line coming out of our um, compressor, we have our discharge line continuing on to our condenser. Between it, we place an oil separator. We also have an oil return line that brings the oil back to the compressor. The refrigerant oil mixture pumped out of the compressor flows at high speed in the discharge line. The diameter of the oil separator is larger than the diameter of the discharge line. This larger diameter slows the oil flow down in the oil separator, which makes it easier to capture the oil aerosol droplets. The oil is captured as the flow passes through screens, baffles, filters, or certain piping arrangements within the oil separator. The oil that is captured falls to the bottom of the oil separator and is collected. The rising oil level will lift a float, almost like a, lack of better terms, toilet tank float that opens a needle valve to allow the oil to return to the compressor crankcase or the suction line. In some installations, the oil will move into a separate oil reservoir before circulating in the crankcase or suction line. On hermetic systems, the oil return line is usually connected to the suction line near the compressor with a T fitting. And that's because a hermetic compressor is sealed and we cannot pipe an oil separator directly into it unless there's a fitting for it. Coalescing oil separators can move, remove 95 to 99 percent of the oil components. They usually filter made of highly pure glass fibers. The material forces the molecules to combine and form larger droplets that are routed by gravity through a drain layer. A filter in the oil return line will keep the oil clean. A filter may not be needed if a coalescent oil separator is used as it filters based on the glass fibers. Okay, this is an example of a coalescing oil separator. The oil comes in, flows through a filter, and then drops down to the bottom, okay? As the float switch rises, it opens the line back to the suction line or the low side of the system. And what happens here is basically the high pressure on the high side of the system forces that oil back to the low side of the system. Liquid refrigerant can sometimes collect an oil separator during the off cycle or during long manual shutdown periods. 
the liquid refrigerant is heavier than oil, so the refrigerant will displace the oil in the bottom of the oil separator. An uninsulated oil separator may dispel enough heat to allow refrigerant vapor to condense into the liquid. This is especially important in cold climates. If you have a condenser with an oil separator outside, and if the temperatures drop low enough, you can actually trap liquid refrigerant in that oil. Oil separators are often insulated to help prevent this from happening. A temperature probe is located under the insulation of the shell of an oil separator to allow for accurate reading. Another possibility is for liquid refrigerant in the condenser to migrate back to the oil separator. Liquid refrigerant may return to the compressor through the oil line by displacing the oil at the bottom of the oil separator. And again, we have to remember our compressor does not like liquid. This could result in too much liquid refrigerant and oil collecting in the compressor, which could lead to additional stress on the compressor, reduced lubrication, and damage to the compressor. The installation of a check valve in the vapor outlet side of the oil separator will stop liquid refrigerant from migrating backward through the system. A solenoid valve is sometimes used as well. It's usually installed on the oil return line. The solenoid allows the refrigerant oil to make its way back to the crankcase during the on cycle. The thermostat will close controlling the solenoid only when the oil separator is warm, usually around 100 to 130 degrees. The solenoid is de-energized during the off cycle to prevent possible liquid refrigerant migration that could cause a flooded start or slug the compressor. A liquid line solenoid is recommended on field installed systems with a large refrigerant charge over three pounds of refrigerant per motor horsepower. The purpose of this valve is to prevent movement of liquid refrigerant from the evaporator through the EEV or cap tube when the compressor is not operating. EEV stands for external equalizing valve. This is an example of a helical oil separator. Again, we have our inlet, okay, and the, and the compressor the inlet is from the compressor. Then we have an outlet. The inlet goes down through a helical sort of drop that forces the oil molecules to cool down enough and separate through the oil drain baffle. There's a secondary mesh screen also that's designed to only to help additional oil come out of the refrigerant. You have your standard ball float at the bottom. And when that float goes up to the top, it will actually allow the oil to come back through the oil return connection back to either the compressor crankcase or the suction line of the system. The helical oil separator is designed to allow refrigerant vapor and oil to enter at the inlet flow downward along a spiral path of the helix. The centrifugal force of the vapor Oil flow forces the oil to move outwards to the wall of the oil separator, where screen layer is located. The oil then flows downward through a baffle into a pool at the bottom. The screen layer serves two purposes. It helps separate the oil as it goes around the helix, and it allows draining because the oil molecules and droplets will drain down the stream. The separated oil flows down the interior wall of the shell, this arrangement causes a small pressure drop for high pressure refrigerant vapor. Helical oil fill separators allow 98% oil free refrigerant to leave the device. An oil return valve returns the oil to the crankcase or oil reservoir. An oil reservoir is a storage vessel that holds an oil supply for the compressor or a group of compressors in a refrigeration system. Oil trapped by the oil separator is returned to the oil reservoir until it is needed. The oil reservoir may contain two sight glasses for observation of oil level and a flare fitting for adding oil to the system. This is an example of an oil reservoir. Okay. You have the down, you have, okay. So here's an example of how we deal with Okay, this is a larger refrigeration system. You'll notice that coming out of the compressor, we go into the oil separator. Then we come out of the oil separator. Go. This has a head pressure control in it or the condenser. 
okay we go through a receiver we come back here okay and you'll see that uh, the only piping that's not here from the oil separator is the return of the oil to the compressor that's not shown an oil level regulator is an oil control device that regulates the level of oil within a compressor using a float mechanism it's usually mounted on the outside of the compressor where it connects through the sight glass hole. When it indicates that the oil level is low, an oil level regulator opens to allow the oil to flow from an oil reservoir through the oil regulator and into the compressor. The oil regulator is used when two or more compressors are piped in parallel. All compressors connected to the system must be on the same horizontal plane. In other words, they have to be level. Oil level regulators are used in conjunction with oil separators and an oil return line to each system. As compressors lose oil during operation, the oil separator traps the oil and returns it to the oil level regulator. As the oil level drops in each compressor, the oil regulator returns the oil back to each compressor, evenly maintaining the proper oil level in each compressor. This is an example of an oil level regulator. Commercial refrigeration compressors over 5 horsepower require a certain amount of oil to operate properly. Insufficient oil can result in damage to the compressors. Oil measurements are monitored by control devices. Oil safety control is a form of control that will shut off electrical power to the compressor if the net oil pressure or oil level drops below normal for a certain amount of time. Oil safety controls measure either differential pressure or oil pressure. There may be times during normal operation when oil measurements drop below normal. This often occurs during system startup. Usually a time delay in the oil safety control requires this low oil measurement to last a certain amount of time before switching the compressor off. The time delay is intended to avoid nuisance shutdowns. If normal operation occurs, the oil measurements would return to normal before the time delay elapses, which will allow the system to continue to operate. Some oil safety controls must be manually reset. If they were able to be automatically reset, the system could become damaged from the constant starting and stopping of the compressors in a low oil situation. Other oil safety controls are automatic reset but have a certain number of tries before locking out and requiring a manual reset. The importance of a manual reset in any of these safety controls that draws attention to the problem and forces the operator to inspect and diagnose the problem. In the mechanical oil safety control, differential oil pressure is monitored using a pair of bellows. One bellows responds to the low side pressure and the other responds to the oil pump pressure. Oil pump pressure must be higher than the low side pressure in order for oil to flow back into the compressor. This is because the oil pump is pushing oil against the low side pressure that is in the crank compressor crankcase. The differential is cal calculated by subtracting the low side pressure from the oil pump pressure to get the net oil pressure. Real easy formula, oil pump pressure minus low side pressure is net oil pressure. If the net oil pressure becomes too low for too long, the compressor may become damaged. Sustained low net oil pressure prompts mechanical safety oil control to shut down the compressor. An electronic safety control often measures oil level. This is accomplished several ways, such as using an optical eye, using a Hall effect sensor, and the electronic oil control safety controls often control multiple contacts that can be used to shut down the compressor and sound an alarm. This is an example of a mechanical oil pressure. One side goes to the pump, the other goes to the low side of the system on the suction line. The adjustment dial that you can see in the picture is used to adjust for what the net oil pressure should be, and there's also a manual shutdown button right in the center. There's a red button. This is a rack system with electronic oil safety controls. We have multiple compressors all wired together. All of them have a manual oil pressure differential as well as the um, 
okay? They have the, actually, it's a high-low limits or high-low pressure controls and your oil level safety is right there. 